critical values from T distribution. Um, I'm going to show you how to find critical values from a T distribution. Um, T distribution is used when the tested district has a T distribution. The parameter for a T distribution is the degrees of freedom. And you have to remember that no two tests, tests would have the same degrees of freedom formula. But irrespective of the test, the degrees of freedom is always related to the sample size. The critical value is related to the level of significance, which is alpha, which in turn is related to the area of the rejection region on the left or the right tail or both tails if the test is a two-tailed test. So I'm going to show you how to find critical values using um, a T distribution and a calculator. So the first case I'm going to consider is a two-tailed T test for mu, which is the population mean. And I have alpha as 0.05 and n as 12. And T distribution looks very much like a normal distribution. You can't tell the difference in shape, but they differ in numbers. So the first thing we'd like to know is to find the degrees of freedom. So if it is a two-tailed t-test for the population mean, the degrees of freedom is given by n minus 1, which is the sample size minus 1. If you don't know the sample size, you cannot find the degrees of freedom and you cannot perform a t-test. So 12 minus 1 would give me 11. And alpha is 0.05, and alpha is the area of the projection region. And since I have a two-tailed test, the projection region is both on the left and the right tail. So I have the area on the left and the area on the right. Zero is in the middle. And the sum of the two areas must equal alpha, therefore the area on the left is alpha over 2, and the area on the right is also alpha over 2. So if I start with an alpha of 0 0.05, the area on the right tail is 0 0.025, and the area on the left tail is also 0 0.025. I'd like to find this number, which is the critical value on the right tail, we denote it as t alpha over 2 comma df. And the left tail critical value is the negative, which is denoted by negative t alpha over 2 comma df. So there is a reason why we call it as t alpha over 2 comma df. What this means is we pick a critical value from a t distribution so that the tail area is alpha over 2 and the parameter, which is the degrees of freedom, is n minus 1. So that kind of tells me the order in which I can type in in a mathematical function, or this tells me how I should peruse the t-table in finding the critical value. So, in that problem, I'm going to obtain a critical value t, so that the area on the tail is 0 0.025, and the degrees of freedom is 11. So, the area on the right tail is 0 0.025, but if you want to use a calculator, you have to keep in mind that the calculator always takes the area below. So if you're on the right tail, the area above the right critical value is 0.025. If the area above is 0.025, the area below is 0.975, because the area under a distribution is 1. And I follow that by I follow it up by the degrees of freedom, which is 11, and I get an answer of 2.2.
Therefore, the right critical value is 2.2. In a similar manner, if I want to find the left tail critical value, we actually know that the two distribution is symmetric, so the left critical value is just the negative of the right critical value. But if you want to find it using the calculator, what you can do is type in the area below the left critical value. In this tail, the area below the left critical value is just 0.025. So, second, Bars, the area below, which is 0 0.025, comma, the degrees of freedom, 11. And the answer now is negative 2.2. So that point right there is negative 2.2. So we found the positive and the negative critical values for a two-tailed test. So in a similar manner, we can find the critical values for a right-tailed t-test. So here, we start with an alpha of 0.1, and since there's a right-tailed t-test, the rejection region is on the right tail. So I sketched the rejection region now. The area on the right tail is 0.1. I'd like to find that number, which is T alpha comma DF. What does T alpha comma DF mean? Well, it means that I'm going to obtain a critical value from a T distribution so that the tail area is alpha and I'm going to use the parameter DF which is given by n minus 1 for this particular test. So the alpha is 0.1 and the sample size is 27, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, and 27 minus 1 is 26. So this tells me the order with which I can plug in the parameters and the values um, in a calculator. So I press second first, inverse t, now, I have to enter the area below, not the area above, because um, the calculator always says the area below. So, if the area above on the right tail is 0.1, the area below is 0.9, 1 minus 0.1. Come there, the degrees of freedom, um, which is 26 in this problem, and if I press enter, 1.314. That is my critical value. Let's see if we can do the same thing for a left tail test. So, in this problem, we have a left tail test that tests for mutants again, so the DF formula does not change. And the DF in this case is n minus 1 because this is a t test for mu. This formula will not be n minus 1 if this isn't a t-test for mu. So if the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, we have 18 minus 1, which is 17. And the area of the rejection region is 0 0.02, and 0 0.02 is in the left tail. All of that area is in the left tail, because this is a left tail test. So that area is 0.02. That is denoted by negative T sub alpha comma DF because it's supposed to be negative because it's on the left tail and 0 is right in the middle. And we denote it as negative T alpha comma DF because it is obtained from a T distribution so that the tail area is alpha and df is the parameter, which in this case is just n minus 1. And it is negative because it's on the left tail.
well, that's a silly, you know, explanation of the critical value. And um, if I press second bars option for the area below is 0 0.02, 0 0.02, comma, the parameter is 18 minus 1, which is 17, and I press enter, the critical value is negative 2.22. And this is how you find critical values from an inverse t function. Now, a key thing that you have to remember is the relationship between a t distribution and a normal distribution. So, one thing this is an important property that as n gets larger, The t critical value t alpha over 2 comma df and the normal critical value would be one and the same. In other words, whether you find the critical value from a t distribution using inverse t formula or you find it from a normal distribution using the inverse norm formula, your answers will be the same. Likewise, t alpha comma df and z alpha would be one and the same. Let's take a simple example. Um, suppose we have to find a two-tailed uh, critical value in a two-tailed t-test for mu, where n is 712. Let's also say that alpha is 0.1. So if I use the same technique that we talked about earlier, so I have a t-distribution and I have a value of alpha 0.1 and I divide it by 2, I allocate 0.05 on the left tail and 0.05 on the right tail. So the area on the right is 0.05 and so the area on the left is also 0.05. And if I want to find that critical value, I'd like to find t alpha over 2, um, excuse me, um, maybe I'd write it over here, the t critical value on the right tail would be t alpha over 2 comma df, which would just be in most t the area below. If the area above is 0 0.05, the area below is 0 0.95. Come in. 712 minus 1 is 711, which is the degrees of freedom. And if I type that in a calculator, I could find that in this t 0.95, come in. It is 1.6469. But since the sample size is larger, so I don't have to use a T. Um, instead, I don't use the sample size at all as a parameter. I just use in this norm area below. The area above is 0.05, so the area below is 0.95. So I type in as 0.95. And I can see that I get 1.644 as the critical value. So it is accurate up to two decimals. Now z alpha over 2 is 1.644, which is a time using in the small. So Right now it is accurate up to two decimals and it's going to be more accurate up to 10 or 15 decimals as the sample size gets bigger and bigger, closer to infinity. So the point I'm trying to make is if the sample size is larger, it actually doesn't matter where you get the critical value from, whether you get it from a t-type or, or a normal type or with the same answer. But for small sample sizes, you have to use a t-table and you have to use the parameter um, degrees of freedom.
overcome. And this is how you find critical values anytime you have to use a t-test for the population mean you. Yeah.